You have to figure out how to deal with complicated human relationships, which is a lot like telling the difference between a mirage and an oasis in the vast desert of interpersonal dynamics. The people you surround yourself with should only make you feel better. They should bring out your best self. There are many people who are good at hiding their true feelings behind masks of friendliness and self-interest in a world full of meetings and breaks. To tell the difference between real allies and people with hidden agendas, you need both intuition and a sharp eye. If you're new to my channel, please help me make more videos like this by liking them. It is very important to have real allies in our lives and watch out for emotional parasites. So, let's look at some less obvious patterns and subtle signs that show what's really going on behind smiles and empty promises. It's clear that you're interested in personal development since you're here. We will talk about how to figure out these human mysteries and how that can help you have more authentic and satisfying relationships. Let the journey begin. Also, don't forget that Stoicism can help you reinvent yourself in 2024. Number one, getting fewer comments. People who often use other people as stepping stones to get what they want are very good at using insults to break down others. The people who hear these comments lose confidence, self-esteem, and a sense of their own worth. These comments, which are sometimes passed off as humor or friendly banter, are actually mean jokes meant to bring people down instead of lifting them up. They can make fun of your accomplishments or goals, or they can act like they don't care about or understand your struggles and problems. This kind of behavior is like subtle psychological warfare because it usually doesn't value the other person enough, which throws the relationship off balance. This is a planned move to keep you doubting yourself and having low self-esteem, which makes you easier to control and manipulate. In their eyes, your low self-esteem makes them look better, which strengthens their control in the relationship. Also, people who say such rude things about others often show their own insecurities and feelings of not being good enough by putting others down. They try to hide how weak they really are and give the impression that they are better than others. This behavior makes it clear that they can't build healthy, helpful and mutually beneficial relationships. It is very important to notice and understand this pattern of behavior. That way you can see past the fake charm that these people often put on and get to the bottom of the unhealthy relationship dynamics. It tells you to deal with the behavior directly, clear up any misunderstandings or stay away from an environment that is so harmful. Number two, broken promises. Making and breaking promises can be like watching a play where the words are the actors and the actions are the careless script. These people know how to use words to persuade others, painting vivid pictures of support and commitment. However, their words often don't lead to action. With the skill of a painter, they set expectations. But when it's time to make these painted dreams come true, they hesitate which shows how empty their promises were. In this kind of relationship, there is a pattern that shows when they should help the most and keep their word. When these people leave, they often leave a void full of disappointment and disillusionment. This lack of presence during times of need is not only a breach of trust, but also a clear sign of what they really want. Their promises are tricks they use to get people to trust them or support them without expecting anything in return. Not keeping promises then becomes a kind of test that separates people who see relationships as two-way streets based on mutual respect and support from people who see relationships only as ways to get what they want. When someone is left out in the cold, they often learn a painful but important lesson 
Not every promise is based on truth and honesty, so breaking promises is an important behavior to watch out for, understand, and spot in people who might be trying to take advantage of others. Number three, only one side benefits. This can show up in different parts of a relationship. Whether it's for practical, emotional, or financial reasons, the user may take money or resources with the promise of paying them back or reciprocity that never happened. They may count on each other a lot for emotional support, approval, and attention, giving very little or nothing in return. When roles are almost switched, one person might constantly ask for help, time, or favors, but be noticeably missing or too busy when the other person needs help. In nature, a parasitic relationship is like a one-sided benefit. One organism benefits at the cost of the other. The person who uses it gets food, like a bug. This time, they are giving mental, financial, or practical help without doing the same or enough to improve the host's well-being. In the long run, this lack of reciprocity can drain the giver's emotional, financial, or temporal resources, leaving them empty and unsatisfied. People who only look out for themselves often do this out of a deep sense of selfishness and a lack of humanity. The person looks at relationships through the lens of a transaction, judging exchanges by what they can get from them instead of what they can give. This way of doing relationship ops is basically flawed because it doesn't take into account how valuable it is to respect, support, and give and take with each other. You need to have a sharp eye to see this pattern. It means realizing that you are always being shortchanged in the relationship and that you are never giving anything back. You have to be honest about whether the relationships make you feel valued and respected or used and unimportant. Number four, don't care about your feelings or needs. If you consistently ignore or devalue your emotional landscape in your behavior, it's like taking care of a garden and letting only one flower bloom while you ignore the others. When this happens, the other person's needs and wants come first, while yours are pushed to the side or ignored. Because of what they do and say, your emotional health is cut down and you feel ignored and undervalued in the relationship. This lack of care can show up in different ways. It might be clear from how often they ignore your emotional needs by not being there for you or understanding when you're feeling weak or in need. It could also be seen in the way they don't care about your choices or opinions and shut down your voice with their main story. They might not notice your accomplishments or, even worse, play down your problems making the things that really bother you seem less important. This behavior isn't just careless. It is planned neglect, a way for them to stay in charge of the relationship by making your feelings and needs seem unimportant. The person using you creates an environment that lowers your self-esteem, which makes it easier for them to control and influence you. It's a subtle way to play with people's emotions, but it has a big effect. This dynamic is especially bad because it hurts the need to be heard, understood and valued, which is at the heart of emotional health. When these needs are ignored over and over, it can make a person feel alone and lower their self-esteem. Even if you're in a relationship that seems active, to get through this, it's important to know how to spot emotional neglect. Being aware of this will help you stay away from relationships that could hurt your emotional health, giving you the tools to look for connections. In this kind of community, respect, care and giving back are important values. Number 5. Manipulating Emotions Perpetrators often start by pretending to be interested and caring. Eventually, though, this facade turns into a way to make their target feel anxious, inadequate, or guilty. They learn how to gently push your emotional buttons, 
complimenting you to make you feel good when it suits them, and then harshly criticizing or undermining you to make you doubt yourself and depend on them. Imagine a gardener taking care of a fragile plant. Provide the correct amount of water and sunlight as a careful gardener cares for plants. In contrast, the emotional manipulator like a careless gardener waters the plant too much and then lets it die from lack of water. They destabilize by using extreme emotions, creating an environment where the target becomes emotionally dependent and always looks for approval from the manipulator to feel warm again. The emotional core of people's well-being is often what is manipulated. Their goal is to keep you doubting yourself by playing down your successes or exaggerating your failures. They could create false situations to make you feel bad about doing normal things, blaming others to make sure you always say sorry. Controlling someone's feelings is always unfair in relationships. Maintaining control is the manipulator's job. Figure out when to show affection and when to pull away, keeping their target emotionally dependent on them. Instead of helping each other or growing, this relationship is about satisfying one person's needs at the expense of the other person's emotional health. Recognizing emotional manipulation requires being very aware of these factors. It involves noticing patterns of interactions where feelings are consistently manipulated and turning inward to see how these patterns affect one's emotional health and sense of self. Number six, real support wasn't given. You can picture a tree in a very big forest. Receiving food, shelter and company from a healthy ecosystem should be ideal because of the trees and plants around them. Put yourself in the shoes of a tree that is alone in a dry landscape with no other plants to help or protect it. Being in a relationship with someone who doesn't really care about your well-being is a lot like this. There is no one to help you when you are by yourself. Your branch wants to be with someone, but that person never shows up. In these kinds of relationships, your goals, projects and challenges are met with a lack of interest or empty statements of support. When it comes to practical help, helpful advice or just someone to talk to when things get tough, this person's actions or lack of actions speak louder than words. They may not say anything against your plans, offer half-hearted good luck or even verbally support you. This lack of real support is due to the fact that they are only thinking about themselves. What they care about are only the parts of your life that affect them or their goals, not your successes, failures, problems or interests. With this way of looking at relationships, they figure out how much emotional investment there is based on how much money they could make. One person is always giving, whether it's time, care or resources, while the other person is always receiving. To stay emotionally healthy and build relationships based on mutual respect and reciprocity, it's important to recognize these patterns in the relationship. Dealing with dishonest people and making friends who are good for you is made easier by this. Given how complicated human connections are, being able to spot fake relationships is an important skill. As well as being intuitive and self-aware, you need to be able to pick up on subtle patterns of behavior that go beyond the obvious ones, like comments that put others down, broken promises, giving one person something they don't deserve, emotional neglect and manipulation. In relationships, you can find your way around better this knowledge gives you the power to make connections that are real, helpful and satisfying, which is good for your health as a whole. You are about to start a journey to figure out how people work. Trust, respect and a shared desire for growth and well-being are what make a relationship real. Number 7. Always competing. 
Imagine a game of chess where every move is planned, not only to help your own position, but also to make the other player's position worse. In the same way, someone who only wants to use you will probably treat your relationship like a game. They use every one of your successes, decisions or even challenges as a chance to show how much better they are, whether it's by overshadowing your professional successes, beating your personal achievements or subtly undermining your choices. They are doing what they are doing because they want to stay ahead in this competition they have set for themselves. There are many ways that this constant competition shows up at work. They may try to get ahead of you in meetings or steal your ideas when you're with other people. By constantly comparing your experiences or accomplishments to theirs, they might make you feel less important. To seem more important, even in everyday conversations, there is a strong desire to show that they are smarter or more successful. They act this way because they are deeply insecure and have a skewed view of their own worth, believing that they are more valuable because they are better than others. From this point of view, every interaction is like a zero-sum game. If they win, you have to lose. In this way of thinking, the need to beat and stand out is more important than mutual growth. It can be emotionally draining to be around someone who's always competing. It makes the environment always tense, where genuine cooperation or support is replaced by competition. You are not praised for your successes. Instead, they are seen as threats to their power. And your problems are not seen with compassion. Instead, they are seen as chances for them to get ahead. It is very important to recognize and understand this pattern because it helps set limits and, if possible, change the relationship so that it works better for both parties. Realizing that mutual respect and support, not a never-ending race to be the best, are the building blocks of any healthy relationship is part of this. Number 8. Not there at crucial times. This pattern of behavior is like a tree that only gives shade when the sun is shining and disappears when the clouds come in. When things are going well, they are there, enjoying the shared light and maybe even benefiting from the relationship. But when things change, when problems come up and help is needed, they aren't there as much, leaving you to face the storm by yourself. These people see relationships as a convenience, a way to get something they want and judge their involvement based on how it helps them. Their support is only on the surface. They only give it when it suits their needs or gives them something in a tough situation. Whether it's a personal crisis, a setback at work or emotional turmoil, their absence is felt. When they are in need of real support and understanding, that's when their true priorities and lack of commitment to the relationship become clear. This kind of behavior can have a big effect on the person who is disappointed. It makes people feel betrayed and disappointed, which hurts the trust and dependability that were thought to be important to the relationship. There are questions about the bond, which often makes one rethink the person's role and worth in their life. To figure out what kind of relationship it is and what the other person really wants, you need to understand this pattern. It means realizing that constant support through good times and bad is a key part of any meaningful relationship. Realizing that someone isn't there for you when you need them most is a good way to tell the difference between people who really care about your well-being and those who are only in the relationship for their own benefit. The video I has now gone through half of its length. You should feel proud that you're trying to improve yourself. Also, I humbly ask that you leave a comment because it really helps my channel. Just write mind over body if you don't know what to say. I know you can go this far. Also, don't forget to subscribe to get more videos like this. Number 9. Failure to return the favor. 
Imagining a seesaw with one side heavy from work, sacrifices and promises, and the other side light from not having to make any similar contributions. This picture shows a relationship where neither person gives or receives anything in return, even though both people are constantly devoting time, energy and emotion to maintaining the connection. But the other person's contributions are usually small or non-existent. Diverse efforts can show up in different ways. You might always be the one to start talking and making plans, while they respond with lukewarm or neutral responses. People who constantly show you support and understanding might not give you the same amount of help or empathy when you need it. You may be honest and open when talking about your own experiences and skills, but they may be closed off or not interested. The reasons for this lack of reciprocity come from focusing on oneself in relationships. The relationship is just a convenience for the person who wants to take advantage of you. They will use it as needed without the intention of giving or receiving anything meaningful. Their involvement is based on what will benefit them, disregarding the other person's wants and needs. Such a behavior goes against what healthy relationships are all about, sharing experiences and doing equal amounts of emotional work. Knowing there isn't reciprocity requires paying close attention to how the relationships work. It involves asking if the work to keep and grow the connection is shared equally or if you are solely responsible for it. It asks for an honest evaluation of whether the relationship feels mutually beneficial or harmful, balanced or unbalanced. Number 10. Break of Trust Betraying someone in a relationship is like finding a crack in the building's foundation. Small problems may not be noticed at first, but they can weaken the whole structure over time and cause it to fall down. Different kinds of betrayal exist, from lies and deceit to more serious betrayals. Absence of openness and honesty in communication is a sign of betrayal. Once you notice that the other person is consistently lying or hiding information, that's a warning sign. What makes trust strong are honesty and betrayal, undermines that trust. Failure to show emotional loyalty is also a form of betrayal. Feeling emotionally committed to someone means they are there for you when things get tough, they don't tell others your secrets, and they don't support your efforts. Adultery, whether it's physical or mental, is another form of betrayal. In a romantic relationship, betrayal can do a lot of damage that's hard to fix. Trusting your gut and paying attention to warning signs are needed to spot betrayal. If they treat you differently or act inconsistently, don't ignore it. Communicating openly and honestly is important when dealing with betrayal. You should approach the situation with empathy and a sincere desire to understand why you or the other person was betraying you if you find out. It's also important to make decisions and set clear boundaries that stay healthy emotionally. Finishing up. Understanding and recognizing these patterns of behavior in a relationship is important for keeping healthy, meaningful connections. Realizing the truth about a situation takes self-awareness, honesty and courage. These are all common patterns in relationships, so you're not the only one who sees them. Although it may be hard, addressing these problems is necessary for your long-term health. Empowering your emotional health is always important. Whether you're setting clear limits, getting help from a professional or having to make tough choices. Do not forget that you deserve relationships that care for, support, and assist you in expanding. Number 11. Available in certain situations. There is time for you, but not for them. It's like a phone line where only one person is always available when you use selective availability to describe a relationship. 
This way of working means you are always ready to listen, help, or offer support. It's easy for them to get to your emotional calendar and resources. By contrast, the other person's availability is as rare as a comet in the night sky. It changes sometimes and always depends on what they want. It's not just that people are busy or have different priorities that causes this difference in availability. The choice was made on purpose. The person's use of the relationship is a calculated move. Two things are accomplished by the lack of availability. By limiting their availability, it keeps them at a comfortable distance and gives them power. If they give you time or attention, you often feel grateful for it because they make you want more. When you try to connect or engage with someone in these kinds of relationships, they inevitably give you reasons not to, delay you, or even ignore you. Someone might not answer your texts or calls, or they might not understand what you need. It usually fits with their needs or plans when they do engage. If you let them control the relationship, you stop being a valued partner and start focusing on making things easier for them. When this pattern happens, it can be very hard on your emotions. At some point, you start to doubt your own worth and the value of what you bring to the relationship. This makes you feel inadequate. As you know that your efforts and availability are not being appreciated, it makes you feel frustrated and angry. To understand selective availability, you need to understand the pattern. When you do this, you have to step back and look at the relationship with an open mind, weighing the balance between effort and availability. Being present, putting in effort and respecting each other are all important parts of a healthy relationship. Number 12. Making you feel bad. Think about a situation in which guilt is like a puppeteer's strings, pulling the good conscience along a path they might not want to go. Your sense of duty, empathy or fairness are all used by the person who is using you to get what they want. They may ask in a way that makes it seem like you're being rude or selfish if you say no. Instead, they might remind you of favors or events from the past that point to an unspoken debt that you need to pay back. This way of making people feel guilty is often sneaky and subtle. At first, they ask for small favors or concessions, and then they demand bigger things. Your boundaries and your power to say no weaken over time, trapping you in a cycle of guilt and giving in. Your wants and needs are ignored or pushed to the side while the other persons are given the most attention. This strategy works because it takes advantage of a basic human need, the desire to be seen as kind, helpful and caring by making you feel guilty. The user twists these virtues into levers of control. You do things not because you want to or because you respect each other, but because you feel like you have to. Figuring out when someone is using guilt to control you, even if it makes you feel angry or tired, is important for protecting your emotional health and personal boundaries. It means being aware of the emotional currents in the people you interact with and being able to tell the difference between genuine requests for help and people who are trying to take advantage of your kindness. It takes courage to ask why people are asking you to do something and to stand up for your right to say no without feeling bad about it. To build healthier relationships based on mutual respect, genuine care and free choice, instead of obligation and guilt, it's important to recognize and deal with this manipulative behavior. Number 13. Absence of personal interest. Thinking, feeling and experiences should flow both ways during a conversation in a healthy relationship. People with similar interests and concerns are always talking to each other on this street. When dealing with someone who only wants to take advantage of you though, the street narrows to just one lane. Conversations are based on their stories and experiences. 
Trying to steer the conversation toward your life usually leads to sidetracks or dead ends. Various signs show this lack of personal interest. It's common for conversations with these kinds of people to feel like monologues posed as dialogues. They enthusiastically share the specifics of their daily lives, including the problems and successes they face, hoping that you will understand and care. In contrast, they lose interest when the conversation turns to you. They may respond quickly and jerkily with hand gestures, change the subject or show that they are bored or impatient. Irrespective of how important your problems and experiences are, they don't seem to register with them. See radar. They aren't just bad at social skills or talking to people. This behavior goes deeper than that. They are showing their priorities and intentions by taking over the conversation and ignoring your stories. They create an environment where their own wants, opinions and life are valued most. To a subtle degree, it's egocentrism when the relationship centers on them and you're just there to watch or give them feedback on their ideas. Impacts of these kinds of interactions can be very disappointing a basic human need for recognition and understanding not being met can make people feel small and frustrated. Over time, this imbalance can weaken the relationship, making you feel like a more minor part of their life than a worthy partner. It's important to identify this lack of personal interest. Realizing the emotional impact of your interactions and being aware of how they work is part of practicing this. These one-sided conversations have an impact on you. You can find more fulfilling relationships where both of your stories and experiences are valued and respected by figuring out if the relationship is mutually enriching or draining. Number 14. Conversations involving only one person. When people talk to each other, their thoughts, feelings and experiences are like cars going both ways on a street. That's how this street would be in a healthy relationship. People would care about and be interested in each other. There is only one way to go down this street when you are dealing with someone who wants to take advantage of you. They lead the conversation with their stories and experiences. This lack of interest in your life shows up in a number of different ways. Even through attempts to steer, the conversation toward your life often lead to detours or dead ends. They are so eager to talk about the details of their daily lives, including the problems they face and the things they do well, that conversations with these people often feel like monologues disguised as dialogue. Their interest wanes when the conversation turns to you, even though they are expecting your attention and empathy. You might get a quick response, change the subject, or make it clear that they are not interested or are impatient. Their concerns don't seem to extend much to your problems and experiences, no matter how important they are to you. See senses. They aren't just bad at social skills or talking to people. This behavior goes deeper than that. That's a deliberate statement of their goals and priorities. They create an environment where their needs, opinions and life take precedence by controlling the conversation and ignoring your stories. It's a subtle form of egocentrism where they put themselves first in the relationship and see you only as an observer or confidant for their thoughts. Impacts of these kinds of interactions can be very disappointing. A basic human need for recognition and understanding not being met can make people feel small and frustrated. Over time, this imbalance can weaken the relationship, making you feel like a more minor part of their life than a worthy partner. It's important to identify this lack of personal interest. There may be a lot of talking, sharing of laughs, and even what seems like private conversations. Unfortunately, this feeling of closeness never turns into real meaning. Various signs show that this lack of real commitment. 
When they're enjoying the good things about the relationship, they may pull away just as quickly. People are asked to put in effort or make sacrifices when they are in need. Number 15. Their support is infrequent or non-existent. They might be there when you're happy and celebrating, but not when you're having a hard time or feeling insecure. In addition, this kind of superficial closeness often lacks trust and dependability, which are important parts of meaningful relationships. Casually cancelling plans is common, and promises are almost never kept. Their participation in the relationship is usually based on their own ease and self-interest. This kind of behavior is usually done to keep up a network of contacts that can be used when needed without putting in the emotional work that real relationships need. Maintaining a relationship with someone close enough to be useful, but not too close to demand a commitment from them, is the goal. To some extent, it's a way to protect your feelings, getting the benefits of closeness without the risk of real attachment or responsibility. Understanding the dynamics of a relationship requires being able to tell the difference between superficial closeness and reality. Checking if the perceived closeness matches actions of real commitment and shared vulnerability means watching how people interact with each other and asking if the patterns match up. It's about figuring out if the emotional investment in the relationship is fair or if it's skewed toward pleasing them. Real commitment and growth for both people in the relationship are missing, but there is a facade of closeness. Finding this out helps you build relationships based on honesty, mutual respect, and real emotional depth. Number 16. Maintaining a lack of respect. When someone doesn't respect you, it's more than just a mistake or a slip-up in the heat of the moment. It's an ongoing theme that runs through the relationship and shows up in different ways. It could be mean words, actions, or even a clear disregard for your feelings and boundaries. It can be subtle, like a bunch of small cuts, or obvious, like a big cut that makes you feel bad about your self-worth. Picture a garden where respect is the food that helps relationships grow when it's not there. The only thing that's left is a desert where nothing healthy can grow. When this happens, any attempt to connect or talk becomes a path full of thorns of disrespect and lack of care. The person who doesn't respect you uses it against you. To show that you're in charge or dominant in a relationship, you may do this on purpose or not. It makes the other person feel less important. Keep the upper hand in a situation where fairness and respect for each other should prevail. This ongoing lack of respect severely weakens the relationship. When disagreements happen, they aren't solved with understanding and compassion. Instead, they become emotional battlefields where no one cares who dies. It is hard, if not impossible, to get back to a state of normalcy and mutual respect when the normal flow of relationship dynamics is thrown off. It's very important to understand and recognize this pattern of ongoing disrespect. It means going beyond single incidents to see the bigger picture of how people behave. It means realizing that respect isn't just shown through big actions, but also through small ones every day. Consistent disrespect in a relationship shows that the other person doesn't see you as an equal partner, but as a way to get something else. This can be seen in small things like acknowledgements and how disagreements are handled at the end. This lack of respect for your feelings and dignity shows that your relationship is fundamentally imbalanced and unhealthy. Finding this trait is important for people who care about their self-respect and want to be in relationships based on mutual respect and fairness. If you liked our video, please subscribe, like and comment on it so YouTube knows that other people like these kinds of videos and we can keep making them.